um, there was the same YouTube user that he could make the Quran better by removing this part here that I've underlined here and it says and for those who have not menstruated so also for those who have not menstruated so why would Allah mention this because the YouTube user was suggesting that by saying this it refers to girls who have not reached the age of puberty because they're the ones that have not menstruated yet however we know that there are conditions with with women where the, the menstrual cycle can be can stop for longer than three months there's actually a condition called with this name I can't I can't pronounce it but you can look it up and this condition has been around it's mentioned in the books of Islamic law so it's not something that's new it's always existed so so yeah, I think that should, answer, that should be sufficient to answer the uh, criticism. Learn Quranic Arabic said that the latter part of this verse applies to women who have not gone through their menopause, but their periods have stopped for some other reason, such as amenorrhea. Amenorrhea can be caused by a number of things, including ischemia disorders, which is a lack of blood flow to certain, er certain areas of the body, um, peril syndrome, gonadotropin resistant ovary syndrome, autoimmune premature ovarian failure, starvation, excessive exercise, depression, psychological stress, Crohn's disease, cystic fibrosis, sickle cell disease, renal disease, thyroid disease, diabetes, slow growing tumours. So there are a number of cases where a woman can cease to have periods early in life. Her menstrual cycles may or may not resume later on. In cases where they do not resume, this is called premature menopause. In many cases, women would have stopped having periods and there would be no way to know whether it was temporary, amenorrhea, or permanent, premature menopause. The reason for this verse was to delay a divorce until after it had been established the wife is not pregnant. If she were to have sex with a new husband too soon after having sex with a previous husband, it might lead to complications determining paternity. So, either three months or three menstrual cycles were determined to be safe. So let's say we have the following groups. A. Those who despair of menses. B those who have no menses and C those who have regular menses and the following scenarios 1 someone having regular periods 2 an elderly woman who has gone through menopause 3 a middle-aged woman who is experiencing amenorrhea that will eventually result in premature menopause 4 a middle-aged woman who is experiencing amenorrhea who will recover in the future and resume menstrual cycles and five a young girl who has not yet had a period the first case is simple she waits for three menstrual cycles the elderly lady comes under the category those who despair of menses she must wait three months the first amenorrhea sufferer comes under the same category because her periods have stopped and she has no idea if they will resume. She must wait three months. The second amenorrhea sufferer comes under the same category because her periods have stopped and she also has no idea if they will resume. She must wait three months. Which leaves the case of the young child. She has not had a period yet, but is having sex with her husband. It is possible that her husband had sex with her at exactly the right time to cause pregnancy, the very first time she ovulated. In her case, she cannot go into the despairs of menses group because nobody could know when her first period was due, because humans cannot see the future. She therefore must go into the group those who have none. The first statement covers all women whose periods have stopped simply by the fact that it would not have been possible 
to know if the woman's periods would resume after amenorrhea or if it would develop into a permanent menopause. How does someone from the 7th century diagnose an autoimmune failure attacking a woman's eggs and whether it is permanent or temporary? Both amenorrhea sufferers will have to be treated the same because the recovery event is in the future and cannot possibly be known with certainty because humans cannot see the future. So, the hypothesis is that one of the following two statements is true. A. The Quran permits sex with girls who have not started their periods. Or B. The Quran could be made more clear on the matter and thus is imperfect. To evaluate this hypothesis, I will examine multiple tafsirs and see what they say. These people are scholars of Islam and thus well informed. They will also be very familiar with classical Arabic. If any of them say that this verse refers to premenstrual girls, then the hypothesis stands. If none of them say anything about premenstrual girls, then the hypothesis is falsified. First, Ibn Kathir. The conclusion by Ibn Kathir is that this refers to premenstrual girls. Not only is the meaning here derived from the Arabic, but there is also a hadith Ibn Kathir quotes which puts the verse into context. At the time of Muhammad, someone said there are still some women whose idda has not been mentioned in the Quran. There are the young, the old whose menstruation is discontinued, and the pregnant. Later on, this ayah was revealed. Those in menopause among your women, for them the idda is three months, and for those who have no courses. So you see here, um, Ibn Kathir concludes that this verse was revealed in order to address menopausal women, pregnant women, and premenstrual girls. And now on to Al Jalalain. And as for those of your women who no longer expect to menstruate, if you have any doubts about their waiting period, their prescribed waiting period shall be three months. And also, for those who have not yet menstruated because of their young age, their period shall also be three months. Again, a confirmation that this verse is referring to girls too young to have had their first period. Now, Asab al-Nuzul by al-Wahidi. Those who are too young, such that they have not started menstruating yet, those who are too old, whose menstruation has stopped, and those who are pregnant. And so this verse was revealed. The young age is also mentioned by the following. Tanwir al-Mikbas from Tafsir ibn Abbas. Muhammad ibn al-Uthaymin. Abdul Allah Maududi. All of these Islamic scholars clearly take this verse to mean that sex with premenstrual girls is permissible. The hypothesis therefore stands. Either these verses in the Quran fail miserably to portray the correct ruling and so could be drastically improved, therefore showing that the Quran is imperfect, or sex with young premenstrual girls is permitted in Islam. So, in the past when people thought it was okay to have sex with children, this verse was God's authority for them to marry pre prepubescent or premenstrual girls and have sex with them. But now as morality changes and we no longer think that's okay, suddenly the Quran doesn't say that at all. So, is the Quran guiding human morality or is human morality guiding the meaning of the Quran?